Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. I am, uh, my name is Arjen Hinstra. I have been involved with KDE for a pretty long time. Uh, currently I'm working at Blue Systems and one of my interest areas is uh, graphics related, graphics programming mostly. And well, that's actually what today's talk is about. Um, I've been working on some very uh, much graphics related problems for the past two years and have found some interesting developments there. Um, so this talk is about uh, distance fields, assigned distance fields specifically. Um, but first I would like to explain some concepts behind, well, everything that is being, uh, or everything that underpins these distance fields. Um, so for starters, the current uh, major APIs that use uh, for 2D rendering on, uh, well, everything basically are based on uh, a model that's called the PostScript model. Um, this model is has been developed uh, in the end of the 1980s, and essentially it models a, a 2D plotter, and uh, it has a list of commands where you go, okay, move from point A to point B, then draw a line, then do something else. And that's how you end up rendering various shapes using this PostScript model. Um, and as I mentioned, it's been the major API uh, or the major model used by systems such as QPainter, also Canvas on the web is using this. And in fact, SVG models uh, is modeled based on this. Uh, which is all nice and everything, but then we have a different thing these days, which is called the GPU, uh, which is so ubiquitous these days that everything, even mobile phones and uh, a whole bunch of uh, embedded systems even, now feature this GPU. Um, and it's a chip that has been designed for something completely different because it was originally meant to accelerate 3D rendering. Um, and because of that, it's designed to be massively parallel. Um, so it's, it's designed to process uh, individual points and, and everything in a parallel way, which is completely different from how your uh, CPU handles things, actually. Um, and uh, a, a, a development that has been around for a long time now uh, was to be able to execute different small programs on the CPU to do various tasks to render this uh, to, to render things on screen. Uh, these programs are called programmable shaders, or shaders usually, um, which are these days written in some kind of high-level language. For example, uh, and what I will be using in the rest of this talk, uh, GLSL, which is the main shading language of uh, used by OpenGL. Um, these shaders will be executed use on uh, during different stages of your uh, rendering pipeline so for example uh, in or for in this example i have a vertex shader which converts points that you provide to the api to uh, uh, something that can then later on be rasterized and rendered using the fragment shader, which I've also illustrated here. Um, which is very, it's, it's, it's 
a different way of handling things and it comes with its own complexities. So, sign distance fields. As I said, we have this GPU and so, but we have a problem here because it would be really nice if we can use this GPU for rendering much more complex 2D items than uh, so that we don't stress our CPU and leave that over, uh, leave that up to do other tasks or because we simply have a GPU that's more capable of doing this. However, uh, the PostScript model, as I illustrated before, is very much a serial process. It's executing tasks that go, okay, move, line, all that stuff. And every previous task ex uh, step actually depends on, uh, or every step depends on the previous step. So this is a problem for a GPU because the GPU is actually really, really bad at doing serial tasks. It's way better at doing massive parallel tasks because that's how it was designed, which means that we kind of need a new rendering model if we're going to render 2D on the GPU. And this is where distance fields come in. Uh, so sign distance fields are at their most basic, they are maths that describes the distance from a point to a shape. In this example, I'm using a circle, which is the most basic distance field that you can get. And the distance field for a circle is, a, is basically the length of the point to the center of the circle minus the radius of the circle. Now, this is a bit complex uh, if you're looking at, at, uh, at it from uh, the point of math. However, it does provide us with some properties because what we can do is we can sample that function, that mathematical function at various points, get a distance out of that. And then for, with that distance, we can calculate other effects. So for example, here, if we have three different points in this distance field where we have one point, A, which is on the edge where the distance is zero, and then we have B, which is outside of the shape, which has a, uh, a different distance, and then we have C, which is inside the shape, which has a uh, also a distance value. And you'll notice here that this is where the signing comes in because B is outside the shape, so it has a positive value, whereas C is inside the shape and it has a negative value. So this sampling is very useful because we can determine where things lie. However, uh, and, and this is actually where the GPU comes in, because our fragment shader is effectively capable of sampling this distance function for each pixel on the screen, which is something that basically comes for free if you're using a GPU, because that's what your GPU does anyway for the final rendering per, uh, uh, step in your pipeline. It needs to convert your points into something that's rendered on screen. And there's a step called rasterization, which turns these points into a grid of, of individual pixels. And then for each pixel, it will, it will execute your fragment shader uh, to determine the final color. So if you have a fragment shader that contains a sign distance field, you can sample, you, you, are no, you, you will get uh, a sample for each pixel, or you can sample this distance field for each pixel. So in this case, uh, continuing with the circle example, um, I have converted the 
math expression to something that's uh, uh, to something in GLSL, uh, which is in fact fairly simple to do, uh, at least for a circle, uh, because you can uh, GLSL simply has a length function, so you can get the length of the point of the sample, and then you subtract the radius, and you get the distance to the shape. In this case, I'm rendering directly uh, the distance to this point, so you get a nice black blob. Of course, that's not very useful. So we need to do some extra operations with this distance field, uh, with this distance value. And so as said, uh, distance fields, sign distance fields specifically are uh, signed for uh, and which means that we can make use of this property to determine whether we're inside or outside of a shape in this case if we check hey is my distance bigger than zero then I know we're outside of the shape so we don't need to render anything and we can just return a transparent color whereas if we're inside the shape we can actually return the color that we use uh, or that we want the shape to have. Well, that said, this test is very binary. So it's, uh, it's not, I don't know if it's clear in the picture, but uh, it leads to an ar uh, uh, some artifact that's called aliasing. Uh, because right now we're saying either it's the pixel is inside the shape or it's outside the shape uh, and there's no uh, since we're rendering in a grid, we get a grid as an output, which doesn't lead to very nice shapes. However, uh, since we have a distance, we can make use of that distance to improve this result. Because rather than saying bi just saying binary, hey, inside or outside, we can actually use the gradient from the distance to... Uh, to perform uh, uh, anti-aliasing uh, almost for free. Uh, as an uh, uh, example here, uh, where we previously simply checked the distance, now we are doing a mix operation using the distance with a multiplier because we want a very short curve. And then uh, based on the, the in, in this case, a linear interpolation between uh, transparent and our, and our, our shape color, we, uh, we render the shape, which means that at some point close to the edge, rather than having a fully transparent or a fully colored pixel, we get a pixel that's only like half of the color, uh, which is what effectively anti-aliasing is. So uh, that's all nice and everything, but there, uh, of course, rendering just circles isn't very useful unless you really, really would like to render circles. Um, so. Luckily, there are many shapes that can be expressed as a distance field. And next to that, uh, there are also many operations that be, can be done on these distance fields to, uh, to achieve different results. As, uh, as an example here, there's a, we have the basic transformations, translate, rotate, scale, um, which are already helpful. But then there are uh, three operations which are uh, relate, uh, similar to a concept called constructive uh, solid geometry, which is, a, uh, is something that uh, CAD uh, uses a lot, uh, which allows us to combine these shapes into uh, different results. So uh, listed here, uh, these examples are, are so union, which combines both shapes. We have a subtract where we subtract one shape 
from another leading to a new result. And then we have intersect, which provides an intersection between two shapes. And finally, we have a few operations that are unique to sign distance fields, uh, which is annular in this case, which is um, which best is, is best described as using or uh, uh, outlining the current uh, distance field. We can easily round shapes by, uh, and finally, we ha we can just take the outline because wherever the distance is zero, we know that we're exactly on the edge of the shape. Uh, in this example, outline and annular don't really provide different results, but uh, outline is useful for uh, expanding uh, or for, you, for creating different shapes. So we have these, this technique called distance fields uh, for, and, and this is all nice from a theory point of view, uh, but what practical use does it have? Well, uh, this, I started with this entire thing uh, about two years ago because uh, I, I had a specific problem to solve. In, in a traditional uh, GPU rendered uh, way, you end up uh, rendering a circle is actually somewhat tricky uh, because your GPU works with points and lines between them. And this means that uh, it, it doesn't know anything like curves or anything. So this means that if you want to render a circle, you need to approximate this circle. You need to uh, come up with some way of effectively faking the circle. And uh, this is, for example, what, uh, what Qt Quick currently does. When you're, you have a rectangle uh, with rounded corners, it will use geometry uh, to approximate the circle. However, if you, uh, you can actually test this out. If you have a, a Qt Quick rectangle at a very large size, you will actually end up seeing uh, the result of this approximation. Uh, and I don't know if it's visible in the image, but uh, you end up with straight edges that approximate this circle instead of an actual circle. So for my problem, uh, or for me, this was a problem because I wanted to render something even a bit more complex, which is pie charts. And uh, an, a geom geometric, geometric approximation of a circle is easy enough to do for, a, uh, for an actual circle. However, if you're rendering a pie chart, you have multiple segments of circles, or not even full circles uh, uh, necessarily. You could actually have segments of a torus. And that makes the geom geometric approach way, way more complex. Uh, whereas if we use design distance fields, we can suddenly render actual circles, actual shapes without needing any trickery for, uh, for, for, for approximations. Because another problem with the geometric approach is actually that those lines are, uh, by default, you will have artifacts, uh, anti-aliasing uh, artifacts. Uh, so you need to add additional approximations, additional tricks on top of that geometry to actually render a nice circle. Whereas our uh, SDF, as seen, uh, it, it provides a very natural way of rendering circles. So uh, this, uh, I, I discovered this while researching this topic and then realized, wait, this is, this is great for doing pie charts because we can actually 
have a signed distance field where we have each segment as its own distance field. We render that segment uh, we, and then uh, we, have, we, we, we need no approximations because we can feed the shape, the data to the GPU. The GPU will go, okay, uh, for each pixel, is this within the segment? Yes, no, uh, using all the gradients and everything and then we can get very nice looking pie charts fully accelerated on your GPU. So this proved, uh, I, I, I experimented with this and this proved quite successful. Uh, my, initial ex uh, uh, my initial implementation of this actually used uh, a number of uh, 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 actually used a bunch of the uh, uh, CSG operations that I mentioned before because it used a circle and then cut away the parts that are not uh, so it, it ended up with a segment of a circle instead of using the full circle. Uh, later on I found a, a distance field operation, a distance field function for a uh, for a, a, par, a, a part of an arc like this. So that became unnecessary uh, and the result would, was better that way. But even the, 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 the initial uh, implementation was already better than an approximation in geometry would have been. So using that information from the pie chart, I went on and figured, well, what if we do the same with line charts? Line charts have similar problems. You have uh, lines that le will have uh, aliasing problems if you use geometry for them. Um, you want to be able to vary their thickness, so uh, you can't just render points uh, or re render line segments easily because you're, you need to uh, be able to control what these line segments look so you would need to generate geometry for the entire line segments which becomes complex rather quickly um, that said the the, uh, the 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 distance field behind the line chart implementation turned out to be a bit more complex as well uh, because it's hard to uh, are, uh, it, it, it's tricky to make a, uh, a, a set of, of, of line segments this way. So what I ended up doing instead is that uh, rather than uh, trying to chain a bunch of line segments, uh, because then you lose information about what is uh, above or below the line, uh, this actually renders using a polygon. Effectively, what it does is there is a polygon that has rendered this using about this shape. And then if we need to fill it, we can just fill that entire shape. Uh, and using some of the other operations like the annular and outline, we can get the just the line uh, on the side and render that as well. So this is all. Uh, this is how it's all been implemented in the K-Quick Charts uh, framework, and there's a bunch of other features there that uh, I'm not going to into right now because those are not related to distance fields. Um, the distance fields do power uh, two of the main chart types, though. Um, another use case for distance fields um, came later. Uh, Kirigami has a concept called cards. Uh, they used to look ab approximately like this, um, which is okay uh, visually, but there's actually a, 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 a bit of an element missing here uh, because these use sharp corners. Whereas a lot of elements within the breeze style and within our, uh, our, our general visual theming have rounded corners. Um, 
But there was another problem with these because their implementation was rather suboptimal. Uh, it's not, uh, you can't see it from the visual result, but in, in the background, what this did was actually create uh, separate items for each shadowed edge. So there is a, an, an, uh, an item here for the left edge, one for the bottom edge, one for the left bottom corner, and all, etc. And that makes the uh, implementation of this rather expensive. So I, I, I spent some time thinking, what if I, we could replace this entire background thing with all the items with just a single item to render this background? And that's how I created an item that's now called Shadowed Rectangle, which is a distance field of a rectangle with rounded corners uh, that also includes a shadow. Um, which meant that I had one item that would allow me to render this entire background, including its shadow, without needing any other items and with a very a, a, a fairly simple uh, implementation in the shader actually because it's you you need the distance field for the rectangle but after that most of the other effects are simple operations on that distance field or on the distance that you get from the distance field so uh, this allow this also allows extra features that current cute quick rectangle doesn't expose, like having different uh, radia radiuses for different corners. Uh, well, with this I could replace the background of the cards. However, there was a remaining problem because uh, some of the cards have an image in the top. And if we render uh, the background with rounded corners, that's all fine. But if we just place an image on top of it, either we lose the rounded corners on top, or we, uh, we end up with uh, some rather expensive, needing to write some rather expensive uh, code to cut off these corners of this image. Luckily, uh, again, the, the, the distance field implementation provides a, uh, a fairly e simple uh, solution here because what we can do is rather than fill the distance field with a solid color, we can query a texture, get a color from the texture and use that as the color if, uh, of the shape in uh, one if we're inside the distance. Which means that rather than needing to uh, do a whole, whole complex set of operations to render uh, a shape and query the, uh, use that as an opacity mask to cut off these corners, we can just use almost the same logic as the rectangle previously used and then use that to render a texture instead. So with that, I managed. I was able to recreate or replace the cards with a new background that used the shadowed rectangle and used the shadowed texture implementation to get rounded corners and uh, uh, also a slight and an, a new updated design for the cards and just generally looked a lot nicer than what we had before that. And well, both of these elements were very important because eventually what I did, uh, or what I was working on was a new version of uh, our new system monitor for Plasma. And this system monitor is very heavy on charts because almost all the data sources you want to render as a chart. So you don't want to be to have to constantly fall back on CPU rendering. Um, 
you instead want to make sure that your charts can update at a smooth frame rate, ideally uh, whatever your refresh rate of your monitor is. So that's what I, uh, where I put, uh, or what I did to make this all possible. Um, the pie charts are, are, may, are, are provided by quick charts. The line charts are provided by quick charts and both use the sign distance fields for rendering. And then the cards are provided by Kirigami now, uh, but also use distance fields for rendering. So approximately 80% of what's being rendered by uh, Plasma System Monitor here is being rendered through distance fields. Uh, well, and that's where I want to end this talk. Uh, I want to have a special, say special thanks to, uh, I'm going to fail on the pronunciation, but Inigo Quiles, who has a whole set of articles about distance fields on, uh, on his website, and which is what most of this work has been based on. Any questions? Well, yes, thank you so much for your presentation. We do have a few questions. Um, the first being, might be misspelling, but is this shader approach fully portable to Qt's new RHI API, or where do we have to be careful? Um, so, uh, Qt RHI in Qt 6 uh, requires using Qt shader tool which wasn't available until Qt 6 was released. Uh, I haven't done actual porting yet, but uh, the shaders, all, all that's needed is porting the shaders to Vulkan DLSL instead of OpenGL SL, and then building this with uh, Qt shader tools, and then we should, or as far as I know, we should be able to build using Qt 6. So as far as I know, it's it's fully portable, and there isn't any uh, any real limitations there. In fact, uh, Qt six RHI actually makes things easier because right now we have to maintain a separate set of shaders for core profiles and uh, a whole bunch of other tweaks just to make sure that uh, we can support a various set of OpenGL APIs. Whereas in Qt6, uh, shader tools will take care of all that for us. All right. The next question, can we do these curves with signed distance fields? Bezier curves, uh, yes, there is a distance field for Bezier curves. Um, the, that said, uh, this, those implementations get uh, expensive rather quickly. Uh, so it depends a bit on how many, uh, many of these BJ curves you want to render, uh, whether that's uh, feasible or not. Uh, alternatively, what I do in quick charts for uh, the line chart smoothing is that actually the, the, the processing of the uh, smoothing is done on the CPU, and then this is rendered on the GPU as individual line segments. One final question for you. One of Qt Quick's text renderers is also SDF-based, inspired by Valve SIGGRAPH paper that popularized the technique. Is this usage broadly similar, or has the SDF state of the art evolved? So uh, the, I do know that uh, the distance field rendering of Qt's text is indeed also based on this. 
the main difference there is that um, the text rendering uses uh, pre-calculated values for the distance. It will generate uh, a texture with, that encodes the distance for each point in the texture, um, which is mostly because the actual text shapes would be way too complex to render directly on the GPU because you have all these features of, of uh, fonts that you need to take care of. Uh, and as basically, they're a, very, a, a large collection of very complex Bajet parts, which as I said previously, you can do, uh, but it gets expensive. Um, so they're mostly similar uh, with the, the side note that uh, distance field text is using pre-computed distance fields, whereas what we're doing here is uh, using the actual distance field function uh, for for rendering, which allows us to scale things much more easily. 